Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bob Lovgren. This is the uh, uh, Media Watch show, uh, which we are doing intermittently and uh, talking about media. And the boy, there's a lot, of, you know, a lot of talk about it. Reading the uh, opinion page of the uh, LA Times is, is always interesting to see what they what they say about uh, their truth about the story. <laughs> uh, and even in the, you know, the, the, it, becomes, it becomes an opinion page. We had this discussion today, in fact, huh, Rob? That mm -hmm. Basically, the old, the old the John Cameron Swayze and Walter Cronkite days are long, sought, long gone. And both the, both the conservatives and the, and the liberals say, do the same thing. They say, my opinion, or I think. That's not news. That's what you think and your opinion of what the news is. You hear that? You hear that all the time. It's just it's a very personal kind of thing. Anyway, that's kind of thing we. That's our theme essentially, for this this show and so on. Anyway, um, we're going to talk about a variety of things. Uh, Rob has some some slides he's going to show you and so on. But I want to first talk about fascism. You hear that term all the time, Nazis, uh, and both again, both the conservatives and the liberals use it uh, to to dis, the, the the swage or with the bigger with bigger word than that, I guess someplace. Uh, the, uh, the, the, their opposition, they're leading to Nazism. It reminds them of the, of the concentration camps and, and so on and so forth and so on. Nothing is going to be as bad as fascism was. Nothing is going to be as bad as the World War II turned out to be, where a hundred million people were killed or some ungodly number of people were killed, especially the Russians, in fact. They lost more people than any, they lost more people than all the other nations combined. Japs, Germans, British, Americans, French, the rest of the world. Uh, they, 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 they lost a lot of people, which says a lot about them. And, and that. Uh, I want to go to Stalingrad just to see that big statue sitting, sitting there. I, said, I, I know a lot about that battle. At any rate, there, um, um, where was I? Fascism and fascism. fascism. Fascism, yeah. First of all, fascism is not a political political. Uh, uh, it's, it's not a form of government. It's it's uh, it's 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 all it was was in fact it came came from Italian word from Mussolini whose par party was a socialist party. If anything, this has a lot to do with socialism. Nazi stands for National Socialism. That was the party that Hitler was was, was Hitler's party. Um, but that's what it comes from, and it's more tied mostly to Hitler. I don't think Mussolini even. Thought about the same the same atrocities that Hitler uh, uh, got got did. In fact, it was a part of it, and so on. Which probably was the reason for his downfall. Killing six million Jews didn't do his country much good, basically, uh, as it turned out. At any rate, um, it, it, it used up a lot of resources that he could have used to make war. And in fact, just for the simple fact, for example, there was over two hundred fifty thousand German. Jews who had served in World War One and were willing to serve in World War Two for the German, uh, for the Nazi government. What did Hitler do? He gassed them. And he got got rid of them too. Uh, what a stupid thing to do. One of the stupidest things that he could possibly. Besides everything else, it's it's just it was just plain stupid. At any rate, I, I, it bugs me when people conservatives call they the minute the minute they there's something wrong they right away they say it's fascism what was we're going to say that there's there's going to be uh, uh, against democracy it's ah, yes. ruined democracy for example the January sixth uh, uh, movement and so on this is going to wreck democracy well it didn't the leader of the group was a guy that wore a helmet with horns on it I think it was fur on the horns or something like that and he had a tap he had some flag tattooed on his on his chest and so on. This is the leader of a, of a, a insurrection. <laughs> I really don't think that that was a leader. I think that Neither was. Do I. Neither I think do I. he but was. He, he's he's represented. He represents pretty much anybody that was there. Mostly, I think he was just the most photogenic. It's, it's like. Well, let's, that's right. They let's put a, this on the cover. Yeah, that's right. And it, and it worked. And it worked. As far as for the media, sure. it, really, it really worked. The media decided that that was going to be <laughs> the brand yeah. of the. Of course, that guy didn't represent the protests and. By the way, I want to adopt a, uh, a Democrat phrase. Those protests at, on January 6th in the Capitol were mostly peaceful. Yeah, right. They were legal. In fact, I don't know if they got a permit to do it. So on, of course, they I, didn't get a permit to do, go bust into the uh, bust into the, uh, the, the right the, uh, exactly the ca Capitol building and all that. And they broke a few windows. That's really what it amounted to. That's uh, and I w I would have said if anybody had asked me, do not do that. 
On the other hand, what they want, they're protesting. You know, I've, I've seen as recently as today, editorialists screaming that they wanted to derail the certification of Biden's election. Yeah. Well, all depends on what you mean by derail, because if you oppose it, that's just part of the operation of our system. Yeah. And Democrats, for every election that I can remember that, that Republicans won the presidency, uh, have had something to say about there being something wrong with it, and they didn't want it to absolutely, go forward. Absolutely. And they, they wanted people to protest. Just uh, when Donald Trump was elected, elected in, in, in 2016, yeah. we had Democrat groups going out and saying, we want electors for the Electoral College to be faithless electors and to vote against uh, Trump for president, even yeah, though right. their state went for Trump, right, and thus yeah. their, their vote belonged to Trump. But so that didn't happen. No, it didn't, it didn't happen, but what I'm getting at is Democrats have no trouble whatever trying right. to derail the certification or the confirmation of a Republican president. Yeah. But it, you would think that it never happened or the words had never escaped their lips. When, see, if you commit crimes, if you block things that you, you're not allowed to block, then yes, you are doing the wrong thing right. and you are definitely a threat to the system although it's very hard to be a real threat to the system because it's so powerful. But if you, you're standing there waving a sign saying, I think this is illegitimate. I think that elections in the following three states uh, were uh, kind of hanky and should be uh, re-examined before you rush ahead. Yeah. And that is part of the process. Whether one likes it or one doesn't, people do that sort of thing and it's not illegal. Right. You know, bu busting the windows at the Capitol. Try if, if they threatened anyone there, any of that, that's illegal yeah. and, and deserves to be punished. But it's when you're saying, that didn't look like you did it right. I'd like to see that re-examined because yeah. I'd like this election to be... So I, I don't mind losing an election. I want to lose it fairly. Yeah, but that's I, that, I, don't that, want, I don't want it stolen. Yeah. You, want, you can beat me, sure, but yeah, stealing right. it is... Not right. Yeah, but that, that, that's a questionable thing, right? The, how, do you, how do you know all, they're all fair? You can't really say that. You got 320,000 people involved in any election that, that, that takes place in this country. They count the ballots and there's, there's people mm -hmm. that work there and so on. There's bound to be mistakes. There's bound to be people that have some priority and so on. They, they do certain things and so on. But generally speaking, they're very, they're very fair. Uh, as far as, it's a messy process. Well, this it's an easy process to minute. There's an easy process to elect a, a, a dictator and never have another election, which you had, which you had with Hitler, and that goes back to the fascism. Uh, there, here they are. They, they elected him in January of 19, 1930, 1933. Yeah, 1933. In fact, this, he was so confident of himself being, being having a majority. He was but with a minority, with a, a plurality. He didn't get elected for with a majority. He had another election in March. Unfortunately, he got less of votes than he had gotten in January. He never had another election again. Yeah, you can see, he said, I can see a trend. We'll have enough of that. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> you know, that they didn't, want, they didn't want to do that. And of course, he was already, and he had already banned all the other parties even by, the, by uh, March of, uh, of, uh, of 1933. By the way, you know, the uh, FDR was inaugurated in January. Blah, blah, blah. I think it was March 1st, I guess it was, in, in, uh, in those days, March 1st of uh, 1933. Yes. And uh, at the same time, now that Adolf Hitler finally got, he was elected, and he, now he was the chancellor. So they started at the same place. And uh, some people may say, well, the FDR was, well, he was a fascist too, or a, a dictator and so on. In fact, he was the only president, obviously, that was elected four times. But um, he didn't make it through the, through the last one, though. No. Anyway, get back, getting back to fascism, I, I, I just, it bugs me when people say, keep saying that about e each other and so on. There was be nothing as bad as that. It was so bad that people, the, the, the atrocities that happened, I was watching the pianist movie and you, and you uh, what was the guy's name that uh, he saved all those the Jews and, and... Oscar Schindler? Yeah, Schindler, Schindler's List and so on. Yeah, and, it was, and, and even I uh, watched uh, War and Remembrance recently about, about the, the Jews and so on. All of that was true. This the pianist was actually, he actually happened to that guy. And, and, and uh, he was a pianist in, in, in Poland and he was a Jew. And, but he survived the whole thing. His family didn't, but, but he, he did. Um, and I know a guy named Tom Blatt who was uh, 
he had a, uh, the Munts uh, thing out there, it's still there, at the corner of State Street and, uh, and Las Positas, there's a place there where a guy puts in stereos, Alan Gold, this guy's name, and, and, but he bought the business from a guy named Tom Blatt, who was the, one of the only survivors of a prison camp in Poland in Sorbibor. He escaped, uh, he escaped that camp, there's been movies made about it and so on. And he was, still, I think, one of maybe four or five people, ten people, something like that, That's out of thousands of people that actually got away. And they broke out of it. They actually did, they broke out of the camp, and, and there was a revolt in the camp. I've, and so I've on. only and seen one of the movies. All that is true. It's just a, it's a terrible, uh, hopefully, hopefully, and I think it's, it, little bits and pieces come, people, they, they do, uh, they do, like like Putin is doing to people in in Ukraine right now, lining them up and shooting them and all that. That was nothing for Germans to do. That they that, that's where they try to kill the Jews. They they just shot them and put them in a hole and put, put a little dirt on them. That's about all they did. They just but that wasn't efficient enough. So they had to have to have the gas chambers and stuff like that. Stuff like that. Uh, don't even say that even about anybody that's going to do that. What it is is elections, which in fact we're going to have in three in three weeks. Another election, a little, a little under three weeks now. Um, uh, two more Tuesdays, three more Tuesdays to go, and there will be. And as you were saying, uh, there's going to be people objecting to that. That are, the Republicans will take control of the House, almost certainly will take control of the House, and maybe even the Senate. And there'll be people where will be uh, go nuts and so on. Now the Nazis are, are getting in. The fascists are taking over the country and so on. That ain't going to happen. You know why? Because we'll have another election. It isn't just this election. It's always the next election because we know we're going to have another election. That's all I got to say. <laughs> now uh, you can talk. <laughs> oh, thanks. Okay. Um, well, I was just going to go to one of the things that yeah. is very similar between communism and fascism. As you were saying, you know, it's, Nazi was for National Socialism. And fascism, the name actually comes from an old word that refers to a bundle of sticks that are tied together tightly. You've seen it, it's one of the symbols. Is, yeah, I've is a bundle seen that. Of yeah, I have seen And that, what they're yeah. saying is one stick, boom, breaks it. He says, one stick resists nothing. Yeah. It takes 50 sticks, ties them together, and he says, break that. He says, yeah. together we are strong. Yeah, we are, yeah. But what they were thinking of with, it, like with National Socialism is that it was going, the uh, collective uh, good of the country was going to be directed by the government. Now, of course, I don't trust anyone, including myself. Yeah. I don't trust anyone to do that, which is why I, I like... Anyone is the key word, because it was only one. He's, he's the one that decided what, what, what they were going to do. And, and, of course, the, and the genius of our founders was the division of power. Yeah. If, after all, what, what can be more uh, concentrated than a monarch? Yeah. One person who is the king or the right. queen. And George Washington could easily have been king. But what they were looking at is they said, you know, we don't like these kinds of abuses. And they tend to arise when, you know, one person or one group is just too powerful. Yeah. So that's when they said, this power will be, you know, these guys do the legislating. These, this is the executive. These guys do the judge. It's, but nobody is the judge, jury, and executioner. Nobody yeah. writes the laws, enforces the laws, yeah. and judges the, what people have done with the law. So, the, and of course, one of the things that we've watched over time is the, the walls of separation between the, uh, the branches, yeah, the branches get, getting, right. getting thinner and thinner. Yeah. Uh, Congress has, again and again, I think, basically, you know, for convenience and for dodging responsibility, they say, yes, we want to accomplish thus and such. We're going to make that a department under the executive, and the executive can run the department. Right, and, right. But the, here's the, the part that I consider a real horror, and that's the various departments make rules, and those rules can be enforced on the people as though those rules were laws. Yeah. And I, I'm not a constitutional scholar, my, but my, my meager understanding of this comes from reading the Constitution, including, of course, Article 1, Section 1, Sentence 1, that all lawmaking power is vested in a body that is called Congress. Mm -hmm. And it, it describes, but it, to me, this is the difference between 
you find a magic lamp and the genie is going to give you three wishes. Yeah. Okay. Right. But if you, if this is a legitimate wish, I'd like to have infinite wishes. Yeah. Well, that changes everything. Well, so if it, it's, you say you are going to be the body responsible for making the laws, you say I'm I'm going to create other bodies that can make all the laws they want. No, it said you. Yeah. See, I want to know when the laws are bad, I want to know who to throw out of office. I want to know who to vote against. Right. I want to know who to petition for a redress of grievances. Yeah. But if they get to create, they say, well, that's, well, that was done by this department or that, and we don't know, and yet it's not right. that transparent, and, and, but it is a rule. They say, so what, at this point, what is my recourse? Mm -hmm. when, when they harm me, what is my recourse? So that's why I, I, I liked it when it was all on Congress's shoulders. Yeah, well, of course, that's elect you're talking about the recourses elections, basically. Yes. And that's what it is. And that's why the Congress is, uh, the, the House at least, is going to run every two years, not every six years, as, as the senators do. That's an interesting concept. I didn't really realize that actually the, the founding fathers actually made it so it was conflicting. We're the only kind of government, really, if, 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 even the democracies. Like, for example, England, the parliament elects the prime minister of mm -hmm. the country, which be, is equivalent to the, to the president, and so on, but he's from the party and so on, so the party and the, the parliament is the same party as the, uh, as the prime minister, which in our, our system isn't always the case. In fact, it's, uh, about half the time it isn't. The one party is, the party president is in one party, and, it's, and, uh, and the, the Congress actually could be divided up into, in effect, very well might be. The Senate will be Democratic still, but the House will, will be Republican. But that's the way they set it up. Well, of course, the um, in in the UK, the the party that puts the prime minister in is it's a party in the House of Commons. They, right, not I, the House, not the House of Lords. Right, w w Lords does not install the prime minister. I don't right. think the Lords has that's what I didn't, any I didn't say. Even suggest that I understand. Understand. Yeah. It's really one party system there, whereas it's, we are a, a two party system. Or could uh, be more. We really aren't officially a two-party system. It's well, just the way it's happened. Well, actually, and, and neither are they. they it, what, and sometimes... When, yeah, that's when, true. Yeah, that's true. The Liberal you know, and the Tories... Like, and like the others, when no party has a, a full majority, they have to form coalition governments. Right, exactly. Uh, they say, yeah, can you work with us to appoint a prime minister and form a government? Yes, yeah, exactly right. So yeah. that's how they do that. Yeah, and yeah. of course... Israel, they, uh, Israel has it, and in Sweden... For a long time, they just didn't want this one party that was very rightist and so on. So they just formed a government, but it really, we never really did have a majority. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I'm not even sure it does even now. And of course, it would happen in Italy, the same thing. She, I don't think she got the, uh, all, of it, all of it, but she, you know, the, became, it was a plurality, but, but she had to form, form a, a coalition government, and which what, can what? end in the, in the same day. And in fact, as in Britain, yeah. it did. She only has served now a few weeks and she's oh, already yes. quit. Yes, uh, she's um, out, and they anyway, need to form uh, a new one. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, I can't remember what I was saying. Anyway, it's it, 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 these coalition governments may not last. Oh yeah, they 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 may not. They can get them right off the bat. They just have they have a no confidence vote, and that's the end. <laughs> that yeah, government uh, is no longer in power. Italy has <laughs> had all the time. Yeah, I I think ordinarily, I, in, and this has changed in our lifetimes in the UK. The, uh, the prime minister has to stand to election in five years or sooner if there's a no confidence vote. Right, and right. Since the prime minister is from the majority party, yeah. and if the majority party hasn't changed but they're tired of the prime minister, yeah. the majority party can remove the prime minister yeah. and install a different one, and that does not require a general election. Like I say, there's a difference between the, 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 these systems. And that, as you, you made the, uh, the point that the founding fathers made it that way. They wanted it to be that way. Uh, just as, you know, they'll say, oh, it, it take, it's so hard, it takes so long to get a, um, a constitutional amendment. Well, that's not an accident. <laughs> uh, I mean, even in the Declaration of Independence, uh, Thomas Jefferson early on is saying that governments should not be changed for light and transient reasons. Right. And that all experience has shown that um, I believe the expression, mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable yeah. <laughs> than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. Yeah. So 
in general, you, you don't flip over the table when your problem is just that it, it, right. it rocks a little. Or assassination. Assassina assassination of people is a form of government, is a, is a, lepr is a policy, how can I say this, is a, is a way governments are operated. When, they, when the, when the uh, uh, king takes over, he, he eliminates, uh, isn't it, I think it was in China or something, when the, men, when the new emperor came in, he killed all his relatives, his brothers, his brothers, his brothers especially, bumped them off. The guy in North Korea, he bumped off his brother. You know, that, that was at least uh, practiced occasionally in, in Europe as well right. a few centuries back. And, oh, and of course, when, when Henry VIII, well, Henry VII and then Henry VIII took over, the, Richard III was killed. He was the last of the Plantagenets, but there were relatives, and he had sons, and he had you know, other uh, pretty decent relatives. And if anyone had wanted to revolt against Henry Tudor, Henry the Seventh, they would have said, "Well, we have legitimate heirs to work with." Well, he kind of judicially murdered the, those people because <laughs> he, you know, it's just one of those things. It's a, an insurance policy. Yeah, that, like I say, it's, it's part of the government. Whereas here we have elections. Oh, you, and, just, you, you just don't have power anymore. Like Donald Trump talked about it. He endorses this. He actually has not been. He's not elected to any office. No. He has no power. I mean, I've, that's the first time I've ever heard of a, a pow, a, a, somebody who was the head of the party and so on that wasn't actually elected and ha was sitting in some position where they were, they were the head of the party. I don't even know if he is the head of the party. I well, don't know. They, they, you know, they, 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 the media, of course, the opposite media right. said that he's running the whole thing. He's the, he's the, he endorses. That's the great thing when he endorses people. He endorses people who are going to win anyway. <laughs> I would, wouldn't you call Kevin McCarthy the... The head of the party, and that at least he's the majority leader yeah. of the Republicans right. in the House. Hurting, hurting cats. <laughs> yeah. At, at any rate, if if I were trying to pick a leader of the party, I would at least think that it would be someone elected and in Congress. Exactly. So exactly. So currently serving. Who has some kind of power to do something to you if you don't come along and do some do something? Yeah. At, at any rate. Give you a parking uh, place in West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> I took a parking place in West Virginia. No, and no, walk to the Capitol? No, actually, it was, it was just in Virginia. I, I was parking in Pentagon City okay. because that was a good place to get on the metro and oh, take, right? it, take okay. it over into the city. Well, maybe that's, maybe that's the way, what I, it is. I, anyway, I the bottom line is the same. That. There is a penalties that can, that can uh, you know, you have to, you know, like Pelosi has all of the, you know, he has, she has a majority, and generally speaking, she gets everybody to vote a certain way, except for the squad. Mm -hmm. Uh, who, you know, they, that's the whole idea about it, getting an election for, for Congress and so on. You don't have to have the party. I could run, and I did, run for, run for Congress and so on. I didn't have to have anybody say, saying it, as opposed to the, 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 uh, the, the uh, British government, but you have to get the, the certification of the party in order to run for, for the, uh, the seat in the, in the, uh, in the parliament. Uh, you, you can't just Say I'm going to run and I'm going to run, run, run uh, uh, was going to be a candidate for this office. You're right. And, yeah, that's what yeah. they do. And um, anyway, that um, getting back to fascism, we'll end it and end it here. But the bottom line is, I I just don't want to hear that anymore. You know, like I have no force to do this, but uh, uh, it's all wrong. When you hear that, believe me, that it, that was the worst time in the history of, of, the, of the whole universe, now, this, as we know it, the whole world. It was a war that could never, it should never have happened again. Uh, it, 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 the killing was uh, unbelievable, what the, what the Germans did, and to certain some degree uh, the, uh, the Japanese did too, uh, was, uh, just, it's, it's just, it just was unbelievable. You couldn't believe what, the, what they were really doing. They didn't really believe it even when they saw it even. They ran into those camps. They just couldn't believe it. It's not. It's, uh, it's not. We're never going to get that far. We, as we have elections. I just wanted to mention a little bit of the, the hyperbole when people were yelling, "Trump is Hitler," and of course, the utterly stupid. Trump is literally Hitler. It was literally only one Hitler. Yeah. And and that that person is dead. But at any rate, uh, I was looking at that, and they would be giving Trump so much grief. I thought, it's like this. If Trump were Hitler. You wouldn't dare do that. Mm -hmm. You know that you can fart in his face with impunity. Right. And which, by the way, makes him not Hitler. 
Yeah, if he, that, 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 it wasn't an election, there's a knock on the door. They come, the, the, the little truck would come around about midnight, take, take you away, and then you'd never, they would, you would disappear. Yeah, Nobody would ever see you again. I, I thought for the life of me that after you know, like two or three years of him doing absolutely no Hitler-like things, yeah. that that would blow over, but apparently yeah. the, the rhetoric is still there. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to something else. I'm going to get this. We're kind of sharing the this, this space here a little bit, this time-wise. And uh, Rob has lined up a bunch of pictures and so on. So let's see him. Well, let's get. Oh, so you want to get even, a new topic? You even want to tell, tell me what to do when? Okay. Well, let, let's. Uh, there's somebody that I find interesting, and it's. Um, I, th I think I actually have a picture for this. Uh, we all know that uh, the UN has. Um, what do they call it? Uh, I'm not ready to show something yet. Although. Uh, there it is. This is, I wanted, the UN has a human rights commission because mm -hmm. human rights are very important. As you know from mostly horrible human rights violating uh, yeah. countries in the UN. So here's who's on the UN human rights commission yeah. now. <laughs> Cuba, Libya, Qatar, China, Eritrea, Somalia, Pakistan, Venezuela, Mauritania. Mm -hmm. I would say of that set, who knows which one is the freest. Possibly Pakistan. <laughs> I, I, it's hard to tell. Well, they have elections, I guess, at least. Well, lots of them have elections, but uh, uh, I don't know. I can't look at anyone there that I think I would believe. Or Venezuela, sure, as heck wouldn't wouldn't no, do it. No, yeah, really, uh, run by a dictator, Maduro. Exactly, and China. He's he's getting elected for life now, as of a couple of uh, today. Yeah, I guess that's it right. Is. Xi Jinping. Libya, yeah, they, I don't think that's even a country anymore. And and it is. But they they don't even have really really have a government. Yeah. Anyway, and, you, and Cuba. So, so if you are having any human rights problems, I'm sure you'll want to talk to those paragons of human rights yeah. on the Human Rights Commission. Now, of course, in January, uh, we're going to change some members. So joining will be Sudan, which, of course, had a brutal civil war with its <laughs> south not that long ago. They have different religion. Yeah. Algeria, mm, Vietnam, Vietnam uh, probably Vietnam, it's communist, but yeah. it, it's... It, you don't hear it, much it, about Vietnam these days. You know, it... it <laughs> It's power, communist power structure is still there, but remember when Trump was courting uh, Kim Jong Un? Yeah. They met in, in Vietnam. In Vietnam, because he was trying to illustrate to him, like, this, this look at these meant. beautiful developed beaches. Yeah. Look at all of those hell hotels. This could be you. Yeah. He says you could, <laughs> and and of course I I think it wasn't a bad sales pitch. It, didn't take it, but was not a bad sales pitch. And on top of that, to interrupt you a minute, and on top of that, what uh, Trump left, mm -hmm. but Kim stayed for a week. Yeah, because it was a nice he, place. He hung it for another week. He liked it there. Well, <laughs> we literally have Americans who retire to Vietnam. Is that right? Yeah, because yeah. uh, they have a decent program. And I, I, I don't know how oppressive the place is, but if Americans who can go there and leave are going there, they bring money, what the heck? Yeah. As long as you keep your mouth shut, don't right. get involved in the government, to put it that bring, way. Bring money, don't bother us, yeah, yeah. all right. And, and leave us not forget the- Bangladesh. Uh, Bangladesh. So anyway, if I was looking for, oh, people who might be guardians of human rights, yeah. I would be hoping for uh, Iceland, the UK, uh, Sweden, Sweden uh, any of the, any of the frankly the United States countries. is not that bad. But uh, there's Denmark, uh, frankly, Italy, uh, there's yeah. Poland, Hungary. Yeah. And any one of those would be better than everyone that you see on that list. Yeah, right, exactly. So anyway. Doesn't have, doesn't have a king. Even Qatar has a king, and this guy, they're all, there's a head man on every one of these things here. Yeah. So it, what he says goes. So anyway, this is why every time I, I hear about the human, probably the human Rights Commission of the UN, I, I get a, little, a wry little smile. Yeah, it's uh, it, it hurts a little bit, but you you gotta laugh instead of cry. Anyway, it's well, that's what they got. You know, they're they're trying. The United Nations is trying to unite the world, or you know, make it safe and so oh. on. Keep. I, I always like to tell the story though. The League of Nations was formed after World War One, and it actually was formed, but uh, Wilson, the president, uh, Woodrow Wilson. Uh, came back from Paris and he's trying to get the Congress to because in the Constitution they have to 
uh, they have to, uh, um, the Congress, the Senate, Senate has, has to, to approve, ratify treaties. Has to approve, approve it, and they didn't. It was we were never a member of the League of Nations. It was a, tr it would have been a, a treaty obligation, right? And the Senate ratifies treaties. The president may negotiate yeah. treaties, which are ratified with the Senate's advice and consent. And it actually killed him. He got, he got, he was so bad that he actually had a heart heart attack, and eventually died. He was a, he was a well, vegetable. I, I actually speculated. That yeah, his we, wife, wife was the president. I speculated that we joined the uh, the First World War in 1917, which finished right. in 1918, right. because Wilson wanted to be in Versailles for the Treaty of Versailles yeah. because he wanted his League of Nations. And so that meant he needed to be a player. Yeah. And that meant that a few hundred thousand Americans had to go die. Yeah. Well, as I re recall, it was also the Zimmerman telegram and uh, that they, the Germans were planning on coming into South America, and that was, of course, under the Monroe Doctrine, that was the no-no. Uh, it probably was a little more, and of course, the submarines were, were uh, sinking liners with Americans, uh, Americans on board and so on. But uh, that, well, after, quite obviously, quite honestly, whether, whether he meant to do it or not, he, uh, went, once he got it, he wanted that League of Nations. Wanted. Whatever it took to form that, he would give away and they divided up Europe into little countries and so on. As long as they, as long as they did that, and of course France and and, and England and uh, and others that were doing it, so they really could care less. They didn't want that. They didn't care if the League of Nations or not. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll just mention as a, a side note that uh, Al Stewart, the uh, I, I'll call him a rock artist who had a lot of uh, historical themes. Yeah. Uh, one, one of his uh, songs is called League of Notions, <laughs> and it is a reference. Yeah, I like to hear the lyrics for that one. That'd be yeah, you, you like that, and you'll, you'll want to hear The Last Day of June, 1934, yeah. which is in pre-war uh, Europe, and it's about, uh, yeah. it's about Ernst Röhm being killed as Hitler squeezed out his opposition yeah. At, the, uh, yeah, right. at the top. And anyway, it, it, the guy does a lot of very good historically themed uh, yeah. songs. Yeah, you, you'll probably enjoy them. All right, let's see. Except for people that don't know, Ernst Röhm was, was really a big shot in the Nazi party, and uh, Hitler took over and he was there, but he got it, he just kind of got it, he was getting a little bit too, too uh, I don't know, powerful and so on. He's, he was the head of the, uh, what do you call the brown, not the, uh, they had the brown shirts. Like it was four or five million people in uh, men in that in that relation, so Hitler got rid of him. <laughs> Went down one night, and I don't know if he, and he didn't shoot him himself, but he was there when the when Rome was shot when they, when they killed him. He was caught in bed with a boy, by the way. Not that that's bad. It was a, as good an opportunity as any. Yeah, right. So <laughs> I'm just going to bring this one up. I okay. I've, I've taken the I know a new one. Okay. I've been ta taking the haunting Twitter a little bit since Twitter has. Oodles of comments about the oh boy, uh, talk about free speech. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, ex except that they throw off people like Donald Trump even while he was president because yeah. they didn't like his free speech. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's they, right. That's right. But at any rate, uh, so th this was a, a comment on a comment. But Scott Adams is uh, the guy who does Dilbert, and he's also a trained hypnotist and a uh, study of uh, human motivation. Studier of human motivation. Terrific speaker. I can't recommend highly enough. His YouTube stuff, but um, he's so he, he noticed that someone was um, going on about okay, th there was somebody banned from Twitter, someone who called himself. Well, what it says here, you probably can't see it here. It says that he, this is what he, people still believe that January 6th was a gunless coup attempt. Yeah, I was actually going to, to get to this in my own order, but right. but uh, uh, but thank you. But I don't want people to, to miss what we're, we're going to tell it's them, just that they can't see it. I, I understand, and that's, that's what I'm going to get to this. Anyway, there's um, someone is upset that, that people uh, care about um, Cat Turd be losing his Twitter account. And by the way, he was, using, he was doing free speech and, and good stuff. But anyway, he's been suspended. They're saying, why well, lawmakers should, shouldn't be upset about that. It's, we have a former president's coup attempt. And that speaks volume. Well, so my buddy, which I, whom I've never met, Scott Adams, he's saying, look, he's saying, People still believe January 6th was a gunless coup attempt. There is no limit to our gullibility. And that's because... 
Okay, I get it uh, we, now. You said this in the beginning of the show, right? He was sort of being saved. This wasn't that wasn't a coup at all. Well, you, what, Without a gun? <laughs> what, what, what kind of coup attempt okay, has, I, has the, has the, the, the people put, going into the building without guns? Yeah, and purposely. Pur absolutely. In fact, we, now that the January 6th committee has been poking around everybody's texts, because they, they say, oh, well, we know who these people are. We recognize. Let's get a warrant for their, their phones. Yeah. I don't know whether that's legit or not, but it was done. And yeah. so you actually see people who traveled to here to, to protest because they, they thought that the election shouldn't be certified. And they're, they're calling each other and they're texting each other uh, from their, their motels because they're going to go over to the Capitol. And, and lots of these guys had guns. And you see somebody saying, I'm going to go over. Uh, I'm not carrying. Are you? And the other guy says, nope. So these are guys who had literally arrived with guns, left them in their rooms yeah. to go over to the Capitol. Did not bring them with them. At, as coup attempts go, that would be really lame. But if they're going to protest and, they, uh, and it got out of hand or there was some uh, agents provocateur, uh, like Ray Epps, yeah. who, uh, who you, we see uh, all day trying to get people to go in and, and cause a ruckus, and he's the one that, that, that nobody ever bothers. Who is that? Ray Epps was uh, a, a guy in, in the crowd, supposedly pro-Trump, who yeah. was trying to get people to go in. And he was urging them to go into the Capitol and do, you know, make a mess, make a scene. And right, frankly, people around him at the time thought he was a plant. There was a bunch of people <laughs> who were heard there yelling, fed, fed, fed. <laughs> but at any rate, here's, this is the only person I know who is identifiable as a provocateur who isn't brought in isn't questioned. The committee doesn't care about them. Yeah. Why not? And they question thousands of people. Absolutely, and, and some people who I, like. There's literally grandmothers who went in, and well, I, I, would, I will say again, they shouldn't have gone in. Yeah. They right. went in, walked around, maybe touched something. They're doing three years. Yeah. <laughs> well, they got a guy just today. As yeah, he's a kid from uh, uh, UCLA, a student at UCLA. Yeah, he's he doing three years. He got, he got three years. Three and a half, I think it was, and three years of, of uh, basically on parole, basically. And you can believe that after this, and he had he just all he had was a cap and a flag, and he was walking around. He didn't do anything to anybody. So, after now, and of course, I had just watched six months or more of um, peaceful protests of Black Lives Matter uh, associated crowds. Yeah, and people Burn, died. Be, a few dozen people died. Well over a billion dollars in damage was done. Uh, economies were ruined, and for that matter, this was a time when COVID was around. They said, "Oh well, people p protesting is more important than health." Uh, so anyway, they they were running around maskless. At any rate, it was something where I, I, I can't help since it happened within the same year, yeah. uh, and I'm looking at it saying, "Okay, here's riots where people's businesses are being burned, where people are getting killed. Here's folks who shouldn't have been in the Capitol, but." basically didn't hardly do anything. Yeah. Again, all right, smack that, that wrist. They, they were bad, bad. Yeah. But uh, on the scale of how bad was the stuff they did? It's close to uh, zero. Uh, that's, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the kind of thing where you get in uh, a few janitors doing overtime and sweep the stuff up, fix a couple of windows, and it's done. Yeah, it's done, right. It's like, oh, you know, some people were, I guess some Congress critters knew that, we, that some folks were angry. Well, clearly I some to, folks I want you to talk, talk a little bit about the fact that uh, this actually, this, this committee thing, of this uh, the Democratic committee thing in the January 6th and so on, was a big production. They hired a Hollywood director or something, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And you saw all those big posters and stuff. All of it looked like it was really planned very that, well. Oh, that, oh, and they, it was. <laughs> yeah, that was... It was a show. It, it, was, it was a show. Ordinarily, you know, if... Congress wants to determine something and wants to get to the bottom of something, you get the people in, you know, you subpoena them, you, they come in, and yeah. you, you talk to them under oath. But all this has been grandstanding start to finish, and of course, here, what's different about the January 6th committee versus all the others? Yeah. The, the Republicans, but the way this usually works, when you have a committee and it has people from both parties yeah. on it, the Leader of the Democrats appoints the Democrat committee members. To so the proportion that they are, are in the thing, which is Correct. pretty much even. Close to even. And then 
the leader of the Republicans appoints the Republicans who are going to be on the committee. Yeah. And uh, Kevin McCarthy, the uh, majority leader of the Republicans. Minority. Excuse me. But, yeah, no, you're right. The, he's, he's the, um, the minority. Got to be the majority leader. Yeah, excuse me. Yes. <laughs> the minority leader, he, he appointed a couple of um, Republicans to be on the committee. Jim Jordan, for one. <laughs> and, yeah. And what happens? Nancy Pelosi says, no, you can't have them. And she appointed a couple of Trump-hating Republicans. Yeah. And I, I looked Both at of whom, uh, one that didn't, was decided not to run for office, even a guy from Illinois, Kits, Kitzer or something like that? Uh, Adam uh, K- Kinziger. Kinziger. And then, of course, uh, she, you know what happened to Cheney. <laughs> yeah, she lost her, her primary in yeah, Wyoming. She, she, she's not going to be the representative from Wyoming anymore. That's okay. She's out endorsing uh, Democrats anyway. This is yeah, right. why we, she was called a rhino, which is spelled R-I-N-O for Republican in name only. Yeah, right. And because of uh, my uh, lackluster impression of um, Joe Biden, I have designated him the pino, or <laughs> president in name only. <laughs> Anyway, um, so it was a big production deal. I mean, this, they spent probably a lot of money doing it, but that's why it looks so good. I remember seeing things like that because they you already you already told. I didn't really realize that. I didn't uh, know that, and I was thinking this is, was pretty well done. <laughs> sure it was. Yeah, they, they had all the all the all the little tools and stuff, and the, so uh, cam, camera shots and all that stuff. Let's lay the groundwork. On January sixth, Nancy Pelosi had had her hired her daughter's documentary film crew to follow her around on January 6th. Yeah, okay. So, so she was following her around. At, her daughter's documentary film crew was following her around in the Capitol. Yeah, uh, and, and on she, January 6th. On okay. January 6th, right. And, and Nancy, of course, is rejecting calls for increased security at the Capitol. And, of course, she doesn't testify. Uh, anyway, uh, and I've thrown in here, this is me in blue, President Trump offered more security and National Guard days before January 6th because it didn't. It looked like there might be some trouble. Yeah. House Speaker Pelosi, who is in charge of the security of the Capitol, right? She refused it. Yeah. And she also had the mayor of D.C., another uh, died-in-the-wool Democrat. She had Absolutely. them refuse it. Yeah. So, the the state of defense or lack thereof at the, the Capitol. This, yeah, this thing just came out, didn't it? This, this video that he had because Pelosi was said she was in her office and says, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna, what did she say? I'm gonna pound that guy." Oh, or oh she said, "Yeah, let him march down here. I'm gonna punch him. I'll go to jail and yeah. I'll be happy. I'm yeah. gonna punch right. him." Yeah, right. Yeah, that's I'll be. Oh yeah, I'll go to jail, but I'll be happy doing it. Right. Yeah, and I'm. I'm just gonna ask you. I think that's so, kind of threatening. Supposing, if you will, that he, she had managed to punch the president, and do you, how many nights in jail do you think she would have spent? None. I was going to say, yeah, if, if you've named five. a number larger than zero, you are wrong. Yeah, right. And I remember the ter- her tearing up the speech when he was making the State of the Union address, and he, she, and she did purposely, on camera, rip, ripped up the thing. That's, that was a new one, too. Right. She's, in case you don't know never, that I have contempt... I've never seen that before. You don't know that I have contempt for the president? I just want to show you that I have contempt for the president. So, uh, anyway, I, this is just some, a theme I was putting together before. Uh, and actually, we have a, a book out about the deep state. I'm not. I'm not related. The guy's written. Is written by uh, Mike Lufgren. Yeah, he's. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't. He's not a relative of mine, as far yeah. as I know. Uh, I, th- I think he disowned you. <laughs> anyway. Um, anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, they, I just noticed the name there. Uh, doubtless, you at least sometimes hear um, people who I guess would be called right wing ideologues like myself. Yeah. No, it, see, I think the the deep state really just refers to. People who are deep in the bureaucracy, or not deep, elected, yeah, they they are they're deep in the bureaucracy, and they're going to be there administration after administration after administration. In an ideal world, they would of course be devotedly loyal to uh, the uh, America impartially and would serve all administrations impartially yeah. and according to the law. Uh, we found out that. Sometimes they don't. I mean, I'm going to cite um, Peter Stroke in the uh, FBI, who uh, basically he, he's he's told us that all that stuff that uh, he was texting to his lover on yeah. an FBI phone was uh, just hyperbole. But everything he did was to prevent Trump from getting anywhere and to hurt right. him. Right. And and that's what he talked about. So. Uh, 
Well, I think, I think that that, to some degree, I mean, we talked about this at breakfast this morning, in fact, as you were talking about deep state and the, the, the bureaucracy. It isn't that they have any loyalty to anything except the job. They want to keep this job, and it, I think Donald Trump was, was a threat. They, they viewed him as a real, and, would, and they should have, as a real threat to their whole system and so on. And that's why you know, they want to get rid of him. Even today, they're all doing all this stuff so that he can't run for president. He's being a, he's, he's right. in, he's in court every day, basically, in some cases. They, they, they want to hang something on him yeah. where they can say, and now you can't run. You can't run for, run for office. And they may be successful in that. They, they may, but here's what I, I say when I look at that. If that's what you're doing to prevent Trump from... That, that's just like saying, you know, I think he'd win again. Yeah. Because if you don't think he'd win again, if in fact you think that he's an albatross around the, uh, the necks of the Republican Party, which for all I know he may turn out to be. But if that's what his opponents think, they'd mm -hmm. be saying, sure, come on, run, Donald, run. Yeah, right. Go, go ahead, you know, we, we, we've got all the people and that we probably, want you to lose. He probably will anyway, but see what, we'll see what happens with it. I always like to point out a little historical fact here. Uh, I believe it was in 1900 or 1904 or something like that, there was a, a socialist communist who ran for president and he was actually in jail. Mm -hmm. You don't have any, you know what I'm talking about? I don't recall Okay, anymore. you don't, okay. So I, I can't remember the guy's name. I think he was from Wisconsin or someplace in San Diego. And he was a, a socialist. Mm -hmm. Actually, before the, the, word, the word communist was even invented. Uh, a socialist. And uh, he was in jail. But he, he ran for president. He was on the ballot. He got a million votes. <laughs> he didn't win, of course. But uh, 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 I can't remember what election, election it was. I think it was probably 1900, something like that. Anyway. Um, uh, would you call those? He could run for president and still be in jail. I was going to say, would you call those? I don't, I don't think he is. I don't think you can uh, say I cannot run for president just because he's got some uh, judicial problems. Certainly, uh, we'll see. The the historical precedent suggests that you could. So deep state radio. What's he, that? I don't know yet. I, I haven't listened to it. I plan to, uh, okay. to look it up on, <laughs> on the internet. But uh, right. I found a bunch of I, I, I found state, a, a bunch state. of fun, fun deep state themes. Okay. So uh, okay, including the X Files Deep State Edition. Yeah. I want to believe. <laughs> you and the reference for all of you who don't remember. remember. Okay. If you don't remember the X Files that well, Fox Mulder, who was one of the two FBI agents investigating really really weird things, including stuff that was looked like it was extraterrestrial in origin. Mm -hmm. His office was in the FBI building. He was tucked away in the basement somewhere, and he had a, uh, a poster over his desk, and it had a flying saucer and the logo, I want to believe. <laughs> <laughs> that's about the FBI, you know, they talk about how there's uh, that's bad guys now, they, they, they broke into Mar-a-Lago Mar and so on and so forth. Keep in mind how that was formed, J. Edgar Hoover. He was no saint by any stretch <laughs> of the imagination. This guy, he, he he ran, he was uh, from 1924, I guess I was, or something like that. He was the head of the FBI, not the head at that time. In fact, it changed names. It became FBI, I think, uh, later on in the early 30s, something like that. But presidents threw Lyndon Johnson, and he had stuff on them so that uh, the Kennedys talked about he had stuff on the Kennedys so they couldn't fire him. If they oh, had, yeah. would have been, they would have been fired. He had dirt on all sorts of folks. He had... Uh, Dirt on uh, dirt. Reverend That's Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah, because they, they they loved it. So actually, as long as we mentioned the fascism and how that's used yeah. to, to to beat on uh, people's opponents, here this is white supremacy has turned out to be uh, another phrase that people throw around a lot. Uh, for those of you who the, are, are the, not the, looking the, at your television set at the you're, moment. You're giving them a, a, a that's a lot. <laughs> that's the other one, that, and climate change. Yeah, if, if you're not looking at the screen, I'll just mention to you in passing yeah. that I'm what people would call white. I'm not a white supremacist. I listen to a lot of people who say a lot of wild things, and none of them are white supremacists. Now, yeah. it would be idiotic to say that there are none, because I think that there's somebody who will believe anything, literally anything at all. Yeah. But... I, I got to tell you that my experience of white supremacists is that they are scarce on the ground. But what was amusing to me about this, this was a, an article in a, 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 a famous and prestigious uh, magazine, The Atlantic. I used to subscribe to The Atlantic. Right? That's some interesting stuff, some good writing. <laughs> but at any rate, now that 
and, and of course, they're, they're all for uh, Muslim immigration at, at high rates. Yeah. By the way, of course, more Muslims have come to the United States after 9-11 when everybody was worried about Islamophobia. Yeah, right. That more, more Muslims have come to the United States than before 9-11. So, <laughs> and, and they tend to settle in great big chunks, just like other ethnicities have done right. before them. Right, that's where but, the lady in Minnesota is, is a re representative, because she got elected to that almost by a Muslim population. Right, exactly. And, and Somalia, is that. And Somalians. around uh, Dearborn and, and Detroit, there's a, a very large Muslim population there. Yeah. And in fact, uh, I had been to there many years ago, and then I was there more recently, and I noticed the, the difference. At any rate, of course, they have a lot of influence on the local school boards because they are the population. And what do you know, we, these days we have school, board, uh, school well, teachers and programs where they want to promote LGBTQ plus agendas and use uh, texts and talk about things that uh, previously, people would have considered, say, you're going to talk about that with my kids. This is basically pornographic and I don't want you doing it. Yeah. So now that we have the Muslims, Muslim parents of Dearborn going into the school board and saying, I don't want you teaching that pornography crap to my kids. Yeah. What does the Atlantic say? The evolution of white supremacy. They, they're, <laughs> tell the Muslims. They're, they're telling you that Muslims have become the new face of white supremacy. Yeah. There is practically no white supremacy, and I guarantee you that what little of it there might be anywhere, Muslims are not their new face. That's right. <laughs> well, <laughs> Which, see, this know, is the, the white population. I mean, I don't know. I don't know who is a white, white, all white person to begin with. There's all, there's all kinds of people that, that uh, uh, and, and like I said, the Muslims have a, have an influence in certain places and so on. This, and of course, the Latinos are have a huge, a huge. Uh, I get. Do they consider those white supremacists? I, 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 I got to tell you, this is how naive I am. Yeah. Since oh, I got that. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> I, I, I don't sound at, like a naive person. Well, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to describe this so you'll understand how naive I am. I understand. Okay. The, I, I looked at Mexicans, and I. Uh, Latinos. Okay. Well, a lot of them were Mexicans, but a lot of them were not. That's right. Uh, but and I. That's anyway. the thing about the border situation. There are very few Mexicans coming into the United States anymore. It's other people who come to Mexico and then get into the country. Go ahead. Right, but I, I'm I, sorry. I looked at um, Hispanics of various sorts, and um, well, lots of them were a little more swarthy than I am. I mean, a bunch of my ancestors are from Italy, and let me tell you that although my grandpa was. Northern Italian with uh, with blue eyes, lots of my relatives are fairly swarthy, or at least right. they they really tan well. So, and I don't think anything of it because Caucasians, you know, range from from pink to really quite tan, like mo most most uh, races do. So I, I'm I'm looking at these guys, and, and for them, I'm, I'm looking at the uh, the folks from uh, the Arabian Peninsula in that area, saying, okay, well, they're obviously not. Um, African blacks, and they're obviously not uh, Asian uh, people of, of uh, you know the the, the uh, other race. Yeah, and they looked kind of more like me than any of the, those other folks, and they were reasonably light. And I, said, I thought they were white. Yeah. If somebody had said, "Are those guys white?" and I would have said, "Yeah." Yeah. So, but apparently because. I think some political folks want us more divided, yeah. and they would, it would be a horrible thing if, let's say, uh, people from Saudi Arabia were regarded as white, because that's harder to peel them off. Hard, or or the, um, the very Spanish-speaking peoples, many of whom are quite European, you know, they, why, why, don't get to, why don't they get to be white? Yeah. They look pretty white. I thought they, they're not black. They're, they're not Chinese. That's thing about uh, what, why aren't they white? I thought they were. That's what I think about this but country. We were so such a, we're a, we're a bunch of mongoloids, uh, mutants uh, in, the, in this country. Intermarried. There's more intermarriage between black people and white, and it's men and women. You'll have a white a white woman and a black a black uh, man, and, or vice versa. Or vice versa. Or, sure. a, a black woman and a white man. There's more of those marriages in this country than anywhere else in the world by far. Millions of situations like that, and that's only one part of it. There's all kinds of things in this country, religions. Uh, I would like to tell the story about uh, the two places in Santa Monica Boulevard. There was a, I only got a couple of seconds here, but 
there was, uh, which one should I tell first? I guess I'll tell the one about Pico Boulevard in Los Angeles. You drive down that street from the, the freeway, the Hollywood freeway down to the beach in Santa Monica on Pico Boulevard, you can get any kind of food that there's prepared in this world. Uh, different kinds of Russian food, different kinds of Hmong, um, uh, Moroccan uh, d dishes, uh, Mexican food, American food, and all this, all these restaurants. It's, it's, it, it's that indication of the diversity of this country. And the other one, of course, is religion. You go down to Santa Monica Boulevard, and you, ro you roll down that street, every kind of church that can exist, any kind of religion, is on that street, Santa Monica Boulevard. That's from the Hollywood Freeway to the beach. Okay, now I'm, do it if you want. I'm going to see yourself. Gonna tap only got, you only got a couple minutes. I know. That's why I'd like to go ahead. A couple things. Okay. One is this is an image from uh, I th this was I think the, either the UK or uh, or Scandinavia. This woman is drilling a hole in a a truck's tires, and she didn't do just this one. She did a bunch of others, and she had accomplices. She's from Animal Rebellion. They are. Uh, that they're vegetarians and they don't think anybody else should meet e eat meat either and they, they consider all of that to be a war crime so they feel okay about running around now destroying this is in the US I say this is either the UK or or, oh, or Scandinavia, uh, or Scandinavia. Okay. now let's uh, let's go straight to uh, to DC. the comics okay. so the, this is uh, talked about this before right go ahead. right we've we touched on this before this is um, <laughs> the the Superman you knew is gone. This is his son. This is, this is uh, John Kent, uh, and he is his. Uh, he's got a lavender-haired boyfriend, and uh, and uh, lavender hair. Oh my God! Oh yeah. My so any, anyway, uh, they, they they've been they've been pushing that for a while. By the way, do I care that they're homosexuals? No, they're going to be homosexuals long after I'm gone, and I wish them well. Yeah. But uh, it's just a wacky thing to to do. Okay. With you got thirty seconds. Okay. So uh, let's let's just see my my old favorite, what Brendan. Your favorite here? Brendan, I love Brendan Fraser in the Mummy, in anything. And let's oh, here's the important thing coming up soon: the Fantastic Four, the first family of Marvel, the greatest comic heroes ever. And the, when they return, they got them comedy writers. <laughs> Somebody, I mean, comedy writers. <laughs> All right. I, anyway, I, I'll pull my hair out now. Okay, we'll get to us in a, another show. Uh, we should do this the show on all these slides and so on. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening. If you're still listening, and uh, uh, any comments you want, I suppose they put the uh, w w w uh, the um, email address up on the screen. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Good. <laughs>